Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm the Tactical Traveler. I make videos about tech gear and cameras that I purchase with my own money. I don't use affiliate links. I don't get free gear. I don't get anything like that. I just simply buy or rent the gear that I review on this channel with my own money and tell you what I really think of it without any bias at all. So if that's something that interests you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Okay, today we're talking about a very peculiar release from Sony this year that I think got a lot of people sort of scratching their heads. This is the Sony a7C. When this camera was released, everybody said that it was like an a7C and a crop sensor body. And I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that. I was one of those people, but that is absolutely not the case. This is a completely different camera. I mean, sure, this camera shares a lot of similarities with the a7 III, but so do a lot of other cameras out there on the market. How many cameras can you think of that have a 24 megapixel sensor and they shoot in 4K up to 30 frames a second and they don't have and they only have 8 bit color. So while a lot of cameras share all those same specs, I think we'd agree that no two cameras are alike and this is definitely not an A7 III in a crop sensor body. Well, aside from the obvious ergonomics, there's a few things that when the A7 III was released that people complained about a lot. Number 1, it didn't have a forward facing articulating screen. A7C Check. Another thing that people complained about with the a7 III was the color science. They said it just, something about it that they just didn't care for the colors. a7C, completely redesigned color science, totally looks different. I just don't even think it's fair to compare this in the a7 III. I know a lot of people are going to do it, but I just don't think that's really a fair comparison. This is a completely different standalone camera on its own. Now look, I'm not going to waste your time going through a bunch of specs and reading to you how many megapixels and all the frame rates and codecs. I think if you're smart enough to have found this video, you're probably smart enough to go to a website and read a list of specs. That's not what you're here for. What you're here for is to see what this camera can do. So what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and take it outside and run it through some tests and see, see how it works for us. So here we are outside doing a little bit of a, a test here on the a7C. Now for outside, for this kind of stuff, I don't use full manual exposure. I tend to use um, aperture priority. I know you don't follow the shutter angle rule and the 180 degree, but it's just easier. If you're out here, you're filming yourself, I just think it's a little bit easier to kind of let the camera do, pick up some of the slack for you. If you're trying to do everything yourself and you're the guy in front of the camera too, I just think it becomes distracting and you don't end up actually focusing on what you're trying to say to the camera. You end up spending more time focusing on fiddling with a camera and I, I just in my opinion that's a mess so the way I'm doing aperture priority with s log 2 here is I pretty much set everything up and then I use the ISO I put my zebras if you don't know a lot about zebras and how the zebra function works on this camera that's such a powerful exposure tool that's built into these cameras I definitely think it's worth uh, maybe Gerald and Dunn has probably got the channel to watch on that stuff I'm not by any means a technical guy to help you with that but watch some of his stuff and learn how those zebras work so what I do is I set my zebras to 65 and that'll make more sense if you watch his and and then that's kind of like where I want my skin tones to be so I'll adjust my ISO until I see the zebras on my skin and then I back it down one and I'm good to go right there a lot of people say with s log you've got to overexpose by two stops and I've messed with that and tried it but I find that that method is not necessarily always true that you have to overexpose by two stops. Like right now my exposure shows even. Enough about the exposure, but how do you see the image quality here of this camera? It's small, it's light. I'm using the Movo VXR10, which is the same mic I was using inside for the video we did indoors. I just had it running to my uh, H1N audio recorder to record externally. But when you're out here and you're vlogging, you're doing this kind of stuff, this is... This is what you can go with, just like this. This is what you get. It's a little windy out today. And well, we just see we got into the into the bright lights here, so we just bring it down a little bit. And we're good. Well, bring it down, bring it down. See? There we go. That's 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 500. That's as low it goes. Our shutter speed's one four thousandth, so this is not the ideal situation to be in. You just you know, you gotta use some common sense when you're doing this stuff. So I know everyone's compared this camera to the a7 III, but in my opinion, a better comparison might be between this camera and Sony's ZV-1. I think the ZV-1 is kind of like the little sibling to this guy right here. They share so many features. They both have the forward-facing screen. 
They both have Sony's latest color science. And they both uh, have the same autofocus system. These cameras are, are really similar. This is the big brother. This is the little brother. Or sister. Whatever you, you prefer. So let's take these two cameras outside for a backyard vlogging test and, and see what the comparisons really look like. Can you tell which camera is which? Both of them are in automatic mode. Both of them picture profiles off. Now, take a gander. I did, I'm using the 17 to 28 Tamron lens on the, on the A7C. So I zoomed it in. I was filming at 17 before, but now I have filmed it, moved it up to 28, which I think is gonna get a more similar field of view to the, to the ZV-1. So which is which, can you tell? Can you see a difference between a one inch sensor and a full frame camera? So on your left is gonna be the A7C and on your right is the ZV-1. Now the ZV-1 has an intelligent auto mode, that's what we're in now, that 100% controls everything. It, it switches between like backlight, portrait, macro, just all on its own and I think the the advantage of the ZV-1 here is its auto exposure mode is so good. The advantage to the to the a7c is obviously it's a full frame camera and it's got you know a lot more room to grow you can do a lot of stuff that you can't do with the zv1 over here but they're both pretty good both good cameras okay? but this is the difference see i've got a, a selfie stick extended out and this one's just on the little man frodo over here you know and this one's got the long selfie stick the ZV-1 has an active steady shot, which gives it, that's the same thing that's in the A7S 3 which is kind of nice. It helps if you're vlogging and walking around with the camera. Here, we don't have active steady shot. We just have Sony's IBIS. Um, they both allow you to use Sony's free software called Catalyst Browse. I, I stabilized a, a shot with that earlier. Let me go ahead and put them in and show you what we get with Catalyst Browse now. And how's how's the, the Catalyst Browse? Let me walk like, like I mean it. Just like this is walking like you just don't care. How's that doing? Pretty good, probably. Okay. A7C. Now, autofocus is better in this camera than on my A7 III when I'm in S-Log. I have definitely noticed that. All right, let's, let's turn off uh, this Catalyst Browse thing because I think... It takes a long time to render and I don't want the whole thing and then we'll talk about autofocus. So how are they working when you see this exposure change here? Exposure just changed, they're automatically adjusting. Which image do you like better? Leave me a comment, let me know which one you think is better. Let's go ahead and switch them both to S-Log and see what we get when we're, we put a little bit of uh, work into try and get a better image out of it and I guess color grade or color correct, whatever you want to call it, with an S-Log. Uh, shot. Let's do that now. Okay, so here we are on the ZV-1. I decided to do this one camera at a time. It's a little easier than holding both of them. We are in manual exposure mode using S-Log2 and this is what I'm getting. Now, I had to increase my shutter speed. I've got the ND on. This has built-in ND. The A7C doesn't have that. I had to increase the shutter speed to 1 over 2500 to, and my ISO is at 1000, which is the native lowest ISO you can get on this camera in S-Log. So it's it's challenging to use this small sensor point and shoot camera in S-Log. I think it's probably more designed to be used um, in an automatic mode, but it can be done. And this is what you get dynamic range wise and everything. Also, the audio you're hearing right now is the built-in microphone on the ZV-1. So this is going to be like a, I'm not going to waste your time, make you watch a million tests for a half hour video. This is audio that you're getting out of the ZV-1. And this is an S-Log manual exposure shot. and how we can fix it up. This is, actually this is how it looks unfixed, like this. And then when I'm doing a little magic to it, it looks like this, right here. This is what you get. What do you think? Leave a comment, let me know if you like it. Okay, now we're in S-Log on the A7C. Because it doesn't have built-in variable ND or built-in ND filters at all, I had to get my free will ND. So you'll see this is the two to five stop and it helps with managing the exposure. I had to go all the way to the five. The six to nine was a little much, but the it's kind of in between. But anyway, so this is, the sun's changing. It's starting to go down now. 
but this is manual exposure on the a7c in s-log and this is what it looks like ungraded and then putting it back on like this this is kind of like with the work i do now i'm no expert in this stuff actually it's kind of one of the things i enjoy practicing and learning how to do for audio now i'm using the movo uh, vxr10 on top of this which is what i've been using the whole time out here with this camera i mean you've got a mic jack it's i guess we can test the built-in mics let's do that real quick okay so now i'm using the built-in mics on the a7c and this is what you can get for that it's not bad you know but it's always going to be better using an external mic why wouldn't you use it if you if you have it it doesn't really add much to the to the footprint of the camera that is one of the advantages of the the little zv1 it's it's built-in mics pretty good not going to be as good as an external mic but it's well yeah see this is a manual exposure changes things this is where aperture priority would be nice and then there's the zv1 which i'm telling you is very underrated sure the field of view is a little a little too narrow you need to have a selfie stick to make it work right but this camera is pretty good. This is probably a good enough camera for most people who want to have a YouTube channel. This camera is probably the right camera for you. If you need to, you know, most people don't need anything more than this. It, this little ZV-1 is, is highly underrated in my opinion, sure. It's that field of view and yeah, you can buy accessories for it. You can buy the, the wide angle adapter. It's just not something that I'm interested in. I don't think there's anything wrong with those. I, I just not something that I want to buy. I, I don't, I bought this camera for its simplicity that I can just carry it around, have it in my pocket, bust it out. I, I had to put the little L bracket on the bottom and I only did that because if you have it on the selfie stick, you can't open the battery door. Probably more important to me is that design flaw than the field of view. I can fix the field of view with a selfie stick, but you put the tripod quarter 20 mount on the hinge of the battery SD card door. That's to me the biggest flaw of this camera. I already talked about that in other videos. You guys have asked for this before. This is a low light test. So we'll compare these two cameras. This is a ZV-1 and I'm using aperture priority mode. Let's see, what do we got here? We got, we're in S-Log in aperture priority mode. Um, and this is sort of a low light test. It's pretty dark out here. In my opinion, probably too dark. My ISO is at 6400 right now. So, and my shutter speed is one over 80. This is what you get in this uh, this environment. This is a low light test here. And looking at the screen, it definitely looks brighter than it actually looks out here. So let's do the same kind of test, and this time we'll do it with the full frame A7C and see what we get with that. So now it's about three minutes later, and we are on the A7C. Same settings, everything's the same, 6400 ISO, and this is a low light test out here. It's it's getting pretty dark now. Like it's. It's pretty dark. The screen is significantly brighter than than what I see with my naked eye. So this is what you can get. I mean, obviously, full frame is going to win this, hands down. Low light is going to be much better in a full frame camera than it is on a one inch sensor. But see, now I'm noticing with the A7C, the autofocus, the eye tracking is not consistent. Like it'll go from eye, I can see it going to then the face box, and then completely going away. So there is some. Uh, this is where it starts to fall apart a little bit, but it's still pretty good. I still think it's better than the a7III's autofocus because the a7III, even in good light, sometimes I don't get good autofocus in S-Log like this. There you go. All right, welcome back inside. Let's go ahead and take the a7C, put it on the sticks here and see how it performs in a studio setting compared to what we're looking at here on the a7III. The a7C inside is like a studio camera. All I did was pop off my a7 III, threw this on the tribe. Had to make a little bit of an adjustment because it's a little bit smaller camera, so it's not sitting exactly where, the framing's not exactly the same in this camera as the uh, the a7 III because the body's smaller and when I put it on the tripod. Anyways, it doesn't matter, it's close enough. Good enough for, for government work, right? Am I gonna buy an a7C? Not right now, I don't think so. Mainly because of the ergonomics. When I'm running two cameras on a photo job for an event, I like to have very similar ergonomics. And for me, when I tried to run this one, switching between this and my a7 III, it was just too cumbersome for me with the uh, the ergonomics being so different. I really miss, I might be able to overcome the ergonomics if this just had that front control dial. That's what I feel like, if it, it's just missing the front control dial. That is the, the feature to me that this is missing. Yeah, some of the custom buttons would have been nice. I can live without those because there's plenty of spots in the function menu 
that I feel like I can get get around those those custom buttons. But the front control dial for changing, like I run that one as my shutter speed and my rear one is my aperture. And then I use the wheel for the ISO. That's how I personally like to set up my camera. This camera, you just can't do that. You just have the wheel and the rear thumb one. I, that's where this camera just doesn't do it for me personally. But you might be able to work around that and be fine for you. If I didn't have an a7 III and this camera had come out last year, 100% I would have owned this camera. I think had this camera come out a year ago, that this camera would have been on back order just like the a7S III. This is a top of the line camera that solved all of the complaints that people had with the a7 III. And on top of that, it's in a smaller form factor, which who doesn't want to have a smaller form factor camera? Sure, if you're a primary still shooter and you're a photographer, the, the, this isn't going to be the perfect camera for you. It's going to be a capable camera, but it's probably not perfect. But if you're a YouTube content creator, this is the camera that you wanted. This is what you've asked for. This is the perfect camera. The A7S III, everyone's calling that the perfect camera. Well, sure, if you want $3,500 for a camera body, it is the perfect camera. But for the average Joe running their YouTube channel, do they need all the features of the A7S III? Or with this camera at under $2,000, I mean, we're talking about half the price of the A7S III, and you get so many great features. Same color science, same autofocus system. You know, a lot of people have made a living off of the a7 III since it came out over two years ago. This camera has improved upon all the features of the a7 III. So there's no way you can't tell me that this camera isn't capable of being used in a professional environment and that you couldn't make a living with this camera right here. Anyways, we're gonna end this here. I've rambled on long enough, made this video probably longer than it needed to be. If you found it useful, let me know. Leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.